The focus of this lesson is on solving systems of equations by using the method of elimination. And you know that if you have two equations, if you add the left-hand side together and the right-hand side together, you would get, as a result, one equation. And that's ultimately what we want to happen. But in that process, we want, when we add the equations together, we want one of the variables to disappear. That's why we call it elimination. We're eliminating the variable. Well, how do we make that happen? And the idea is by using a multiplier or two on the entire equation. So let's go ahead and look at this particular example where we have this system. Notice both of your equations are in standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. So you don't have to worry about step one. And then step two is looking to see if the coefficients are opposites on your variable terms. Well, on my variable x, the coefficients are not opposite. But on my variable y, they are opposite because one's a positive one coefficient and the other one's a negative one. Since they're opposite, I can move to my step three, which is ultimately adding these two equations together. So I'm going to go ahead and add my equations together, and I get x equals, because my y terms add out to zero, a negative five. So you know what your x value is. So to get your y value, you have to use substitution. So I plug in, to, it doesn't matter which equation I use, but I had to sub in for my x values. So 2x plus y equals a negative 15, but in place of x, you want to substitute in a negative 5. So a negative 10 plus y equals a negative 15. Add 10 to both sides, y equals a negative 5. So my solution is the point a negative 5 comma negative 5. So I can ultimately check this, and the way I check is by plugging into both of my equations. So let's go ahead and plug into our first equation. It's 2 times x plus y equals negative 15. And in place of x, put a negative 5. And in place of y, put negative 5. So negative 10 plus a negative 5 equals negative 15, which clearly is true, so that checks out. So I'm going to go ahead and plug into my second equation, which is the opposite of x, minus my y should equal 10. We'll plug in negative 5 for the x and negative 5 for the y. So I get a positive 5 plus a 5 should equal 10, which 5 plus 5 clearly is 10. So you see that this point satisfies both equations and it so that is my solution to my system using elimination. Now let's go ahead and look at another example where we have the system x plus y equals 7 and x plus y equals negative 3. So again, if I want to solve the system, make sure both equations are in standard form, which they are. Then try to make sure one of the variables have opposite coefficients. Well, right now, neither of the variables have opposite coefficients. But a very quick way to get the x's that have opposite coefficients since this coefficient is a 1 and this coefficient is a 1, a very quick check or way to make them have opposites is to multiply by a negative 1 on one of the equations. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that to my first equation, which means every term needs to be multiplied by a negative 1. So I'd get a negative x minus y equals a negative 7. So all the signs would go opposite. And then I'm not touching the second equation because I still want it to have a positive 1 coefficient. So notice now that your x's have opposite coefficients. So you can go ahead and add the two equations together. And at negative x and x is 0x. Negative y and y is 0y. So everything canceled. So ultimately, on the left-hand side, you have a 0. Negative 7 and a negative 3 is a negative 10. So I end up with my x or y terms both disappearing. And I have 0 equals negative 10, which is totally false. This is a contradiction. And you're used to contradictions, hopefully, by now, because in contradictions, you have no solutions, because there's no point that's going to satisfy both of your original equations. So let's go ahead and look at another example and look at our system. So again, notice bo that both of your equations are in standard form, so step one is taken care of. Look at the x's. Are the coefficients opposite? The answer is no. Look at your y's. Are the coefficients opposite? 
The answer is no. So what I ultimately need to use is a multiplier or two to get my coefficients opposite on one of my variables. Well, notice that the coefficient for this equation 2 has a negative 2 for the coefficient of x. So if I could make for equation 1 the coefficient of positive 2 on my x, then they would be opposites. So negative 1 times what gives me a positive 2? And the answer is negative 1 times a negative 2. So I need to multiply this entire first equation by a negative 2. So if I do that, a negative 2 times a negative x is a positive 2x. Negative 2 times 3y is negative 6y. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So notice now that my system has x terms that have opposite coefficients, which basically means I can do my step 3 where I add my two equations together. And again, when I add my equations together, the x terms cancel out and the y terms cancel out, so that leaves me 0 on the left-hand side. And then negative 8 plus 8 equals 0 as well. When does 0 equal 0? Well, this is always true, so this is what we call an identity. And if you remember, if it's always true, that means these lines are basically the exact same line. So there's an infinite number of solutions, and we write our solutions in set notation. So it's a set of all points, so x, comma y, such that you satisfy one of the equations. So I'm just going to list the first equation. So negative x plus 3y equals 4. So my solution consists of the set of all points that satisfy that equation which is an infinite number of points. Now notice in the last three examples you had a solution that was just specifically one solution, you had no solution, and you had an infinite number of solutions, which were the points that satisfied the line. So remember, those are the three types of solutions that you can have. So now let's go ahead and look at another example. And we're going to solve the following system. Now what I want you to observe this time is that you both of your equations are not in standard form. And ultimately what that means is the x's aren't lining up, the y's aren't lining up, and the constants aren't lining up. So if we want to do elimination, we need them to line up. So a very quick fix is to rewrite your first equation by adding 6x to both sides and subtracting y, or no, adding 6x to both sides, because that'll get me in standard form. So I get 6x plus y equals 9. And then my second equation remains unchanged because it was already in standard form. So notice now that your x terms have opposite coefficients, so you can go ahead and add the two equations together, and you get 4y equals 9 plus 15 is 24. So my y is equal to 6. Now I'm not done as far as getting my solution, that's just my y. So if I want my x, I just need to substitute into one of my equations and it doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in my first equation. My y is 6, y equals negative or 9 minus 6x. So replace 6 for the y, subtract 9 from both sides, you get negative 3 equals negative 6x divide by negative 6 on both sides, I get a positive half equals my x. So I'm saying my solution is the point 1 half comma 6. So again, if I want to check to see if this really is the case, I have to check in both of my equations that I was originally given. So my first equation was y equals 9 minus 6 times x. So put a 6 in for y, put a half in for x. 6 equals 9 minus, well 6 times a half is just 3. 9 minus 3 clearly is 6. So it checks out in the first equation. The second equation is negative 6 times x plus 3 times y equals 15. Replace x with a half. Replace y with 6. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Is a negative 3 plus 18 equal to 15? And the answer is clearly yes. So it turns out that 1 half comma 6 really is my solution to this system. Let's go ahead and look at one final example. And what I want you to take notice of in this example, we're ultimately going to have to do all of the steps. Because the first step says that the system needs to be 
in standard form for both equations. Well, the first equation is in standard form, so I can go ahead and just rewrite the first equation. But the second equation is not in standard form. And if you're not careful, you're going to be combining unlike terms. So my 16x is fine, it's in the correct position, but my negative 17 needs to move over, and when it crosses sides, it changes sign. Move my 18y over, it changes signs as well. So I'm going to subtract 18y. So my new system is listed here. Now notice that your coefficients are not opposite for either the x's or the y's, so I ultimately have to use a multiplier. But the problem is I can't just multiply 16 by something and come up with a 24. Or I can't just multiply 12 by something and come up with negative 18. So this time I have to use a multiplier on both equations. And the way you think about this is almost as though using the concept almost of least common denominators. In other words, if I ask you what's the least common denominator of 24 and 16? So what's the smallest thing 24 and 16 divide into? You would say 48. So ultimately I need one of these guys to have a positive 48 coefficient and the other guy to have a negative 48. So if I multiply the first equation by 2, it would give it a positive 48. And if I multiply the second equation by a negative 3, I'd get the negative 48. So let's go ahead and do that. And I get 48x plus 24y equals a negative 14, because I multiplied every term by 2. And then in my second equation, I'm multiplying every term by a negative 3, so I get negative 48x plus 3 times 18, 24, carry the 2, so 54y equals negative 3 times 17 is a negative 51. So notice now my x's are opposite, so I can go ahead and add my two equations now together, and I get 78 y equals a negative 65. So divide by 78 on both sides, I get y equals negative 65 78 And then I should see if this is in um, lowest terms, which it turns out that this fraction is in lowest terms. So that's what my y value is, and it's kind of ugly. But sometimes that happens, and they just want you to ultimately work with the fractions a little bit. So if that's my y, I can get my x by subbing in to one of my equations. So we're going to do substitution, and I'm going to just use my first equation. It's 24 times my x plus 12 times my y. Well, I'm saying my y is negative 65 over 78 should equal a negative 7. So I get 24 times x plus, well notice 6 goes into 12 twice, but it also goes into 78, and it's going to go in 13 times. So ultimately I get 2, um, 2 times, what's negative 65 divided by 13? It's a negative 5 should equal my negative 7. So I get 24 times x minus 10 equals my negative 7. Add 10 to both sides, I get 24x equals 3. Divide by 24 on both sides, I get 3 24 but notice that's not simplified because 3 goes into both 3 and 24. So x equals 1 8. So my solution is the point 1 8th comma negative 65 78 and then you should just plug it into both equations to see if this really is the case I've already checked it and due to time constraints I'm not going to have a chance to check it right now but do check this on your own to see that it satisfies both equations so that completes our lesson on solving systems by elimination